conference and I'm very pleased to discuss with you Khufu Great Pyramids and how the system and a very interesting team has been able to find new discovery in Khufu in 2017. Um, so Scan Pyramid is a mission that the system has put in place to discover new things at the pyramid. Pyramids have been built 4,500 years ago and they've stayed for thousands of years, the highest buildings ever being built. And nobody could know how they've been built without the modern techniques, without anything. But before we enter that mystery, let's go to the pyramid.
that's a theory. And that's a system has proven that the theory is a real possibility. The pyramid could have been built like that. But, but when going on the side of the pyramid, nobody could find any proof. So what did we do in 2015? In 2015, because there has been no major discoveries since the 7th century, we decided it was time to do the same thing that Napoleon did in the 18th century, to build a multi, multicultural, multi-competencies team to crack the mystery. We decided to build a team who not polluted with some existing theories, so a brand new team without archaeologists, but with writers, artists, scientists, um, people from different scientific institutions. You can see people from Japan, people from uh, Canada. You can see people from different companies, including uh, uh, Philip from Dassault System, Mehdi, who was the leader of the expedition. All these people decided to go on the side of the pyramid for 18 months to see whether they could do new discoveries. So what happened during these 18 months? The beginning was a little bit bumpy. They tried to get data from, uh, from Egyptians. It took them a lot of time. They knew at the end that there was no data. And then they had to, uh, to get the new data, to create new tools, to explore the pyramid. But every night, every night they sit in front of the pyramids together and they were discussing possible theories of what happened, how these pyramids were built. And they were also discussing new theory and new tools. And that's the way they managed to create a new tools, a new tools to scan the pyramid, to scan the pyramid so as to see what is inside without destroying the pyramid, but really by looking in how light is reverberated, how light goes through the pyramid to see what's going on and to scan the pyramid in 3D. And um, because the artist had all the other art and interpretation, it brings them to new theories, new theories and new tools, and then it brings them to a fantastic discovery that was awarded among the top 10 discoveries of 2017. They discover, in fact, that... There is a new room. Everybody knows the king's room and the queen's room since 7th century. But here, nobody has seen, but we were able to detect a new room. A room as big as a 300 seats plane. So 20 meters long. We don't know yet how to get there. We have no clue. We don't know yet what is in there. Is there a treasure? The treasure that Alma Moon was looking for? Is that the Nefertiti tomb? Is that something else? We know for sure it exists here. And this is a major discovery and the first discovery since the 7th century, done thanks to the team, this team, who had the courage, the ambition to discuss, explore new theory because there was not bite or like there was not the mind of the past, but they really wanted to invite something new. And they did. And the now, of course, the exploration is going on. The exploration is going on, but this man is very, very happy about uh, this first discovery first. We also managed to, um, to develop new myography instrument, new 3D simulation, new analysis. We also managed to do something very important. It's to, us, to get in 3D, to do the 3D simulation of all the pyramids so as to be sure that whatever happens, we will have this 3D simulation. We also manage to change the way pyramid, Egypt, archaeology are being taught. And here you can listen to this Harvard professor who is now explaining the pyramid in a very different way, in an experience way, which is a new way of educating, educating by experience. We're sitting in the Visualization Center at Harvard University, and this is a room where I teach Egyptology classes, and we visit the Giza necropolis in real-time 3D space. The students come in, put on the 3D glasses, and travel to Giza without even buying a plane ticket. Well, in many of my classes, I'm giving traditional lectures, but when, when we bring them in here, everything changes and they get to experience Giza in a new virtual and exciting way. So this complex looking image is actually the 3D model underneath 
and then superimposed all of the architectural and archaeological plans from the original excavators. We can turn these on and off and study the temple in any way that we want. If you go to Giza today, you won't see anything here. So we're bringing it to life in a way that's impossible, even at the site of Giza itself. So with this expedition, we are able to bring Giza back to life. We are even able to discover a new room, a secret room. It's only the beginning of the next phase of the Giza exploration, but it's, it's a wonderful way of proving our 3D simulation, our technology, and how putting a team very diverse, like artists, but also scientists, can change the way. And it's also been the beginning of a lot of new theory about Giza and the Khufu Pyramid. And you will probably be very happy to know that there will be a new Black and Mortimer going out very soon with a new theory on the pyramid because the writer of Black and Mortimer was part of this ex expedition. Mm -hmm.